بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وإمام المصريين سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله أستاذ من السانية الأكبر وقائد المسلمين الأعظم وصاحب الرسالة الأسمى سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله اللهم صل وسلم عليه To begin the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask him to bless our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the greatest human being, the teachers of human beings ever to live on earth. May Allah show his blessings and benediction of, upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And rahibu bi ustadim al-kareem tarheeb al-haram Now we are actually welcoming our guest speaker here al-fadilat al-ustad jawi sah rashid sir Sayyid Rashid, the Imam of uh, Bakersfield in California, here, inshallah. And the brother was a former uh, pilot. He's a pilot, so he's a. No, mashallah, it's easier for him to pilot us here, inshallah. <laughs> so we pray that Allah works him abundantly for attending this gathering. Jazakallah khairan. The dunya wal akhirah, for yet fatal mashkur. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين uh, Dear brothers and sisters I'm very happy to be here with you today and uh, I'm very grateful to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that connects the humanity all together with that beautiful religion, the religion of Islam, that we all are enjoying. And we hope and pray, inshallah, that we all be admitted to the Jannah after this life, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, our talk today will be about the quality of our Salah. The quality of our Salah. And I want to explain first the meaning of Salah. Salah in the Arabic language means the connection, the relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without that relationship, we are not going to be successful in this life nor in the hereafter as well. And it happened that the Salah in our religion is the main pillar of Islam. The main pillar of Islam. Salah in itself contains the rest of the pillars of Islam. While you are in Salah, you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah as a part of your Salah. And that is the first pillar. While you are in Salah, you cannot eat, you cannot drink, and this is a touch of fasting. While you are in Salah, the best wording are the words of the Salah. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Kalima Tayyiba Sadaqah, the good word is a charity. So you are given a charity while you are in the Salah. While you are in the Salah, you are directed toward the Kaaba, to which we all go for Hajj. So when you do the Salah, you are doing the whole pillars of Islam as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the early beginning, created Adam from the physical body, then the spirit, or the soul. That physical body was made from the soil and water, what we call the mud. Mud. When Allah shaped Adam and made him look like us, but he was dead, he blowed into him from his spirit, he became alive. And from Adam and Eve, all of us came here. So we are created from two main parts, the physical body, then the soul. 
For the physical body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from the same origin what feeds that physical body. Created from the mud, all the vegetations, the fruit, the animals that we are eating for that body to nourish, to be strong, to be alive. And created for the spirit what pleases the spirit, what makes the spirit and the soul very strong and alive. And these are the worships that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made obligations for us. So I like when I talk about the quality of the salah to compare it with the quality of the food we eat for the physical part of us to grow and be healthy and strong. The spiritual part of us need also to grow and be healthy and be strong. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you able to eat three, four times a day, <coughs> eating and drinking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for this body some food that we eat probably once every year. Like certain fruits like the apricots, uh, watermelons, uh, something that you could live even without. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created also for that human body as a protection, the immunization that we take once in our lifetime. In the other side, he created for the spirit a daily nutrition, which is the salah. A yearly nutrition that we could live or without. And that is the fasting and the zakah. And once in your lifetime, he, he wants you to go to Hajj. If you compare this with what we take for our body, the daily salah equal the daily food and drinks we eat every day. The fasting and the zakah will equal to the seasonal fruit and food that we take maybe once a year. And the immunization is equal to the Hajj that we take once in all of our lifetime. Can we live without Hajj? Yes. Can we live without immunization? Yes. Can we live without fasting? Yes, you may be sick. You may be in a journey. You may be exempt. Can we live without apricot or seasonal food? Yes. Can we live without zakah? Yes. You may be poor. You may not be qualified for paying the zakah. But can we live without eating and drinking every day? The answer is no. Can your soul live without the salah that we take few times every day? The answer is no. Now I'd like to establish a relationship or a, a good comparison between the daily food and the daily salah. You cannot live without the daily food and drinks. If you do that for a few days, you may die. And you cannot live likewise without the salah. This is the part that feeds your soul, that feeds your spirit. What if you cannot chew the food? They have to blend it for you. What if you cannot swallow it? They have to inject it into you because you cannot live without it. What if you cannot pray standing? You have to pray sitting down. What if you cannot do it sitting down? You can do it laying down. What if you cannot do it laying down? You can blink by your eyes for ruku' and sujood. That means, brothers and sisters, that we cannot live without salah. No one is exempt. You can be exempt from zakah. You can be exempt from fasting. You can be exempt from hajj, but you cannot exempt from zakah. Likewise, you can be exempt from that seasonal food that you eat once a year. With or without watermelon, you will be okay. With or without apricot, you will be okay. With or without immunization, you may be okay. So, now we are establishing one thing here, that our soul cannot live without the salah, like our body cannot live without food. the food. Now, we all eat and we all pray. Do we all eat the good food? 
No. Do we all pray the perfect Salah? No. Some of us, they just eat. We all ate breakfast today. I'm not talking about lunch because lunch was good. <laughs> we all ate breakfast today. Some of us were very conscious about their food, so they chosen what they eat. The right quantity, the right quality, the right ingredients. And some of us, they just ate donuts and coffee, regardless whether that is good for them or not. Some of us also prayed Fajr in a jama'ah in a masjid. And some prayed Fajr in a jama'ah in the house. It's different. And some prayed Fajr after sunrise. And some prayed Fajr before sunrise. So we all vary when it comes to the Salah, like we all vary when it comes to food. Now I want you to, after we finish this talk, to evaluate your Salah, as you always try to evaluate your food. When you are overweight, you try to lose weight. When you are sick, you go to the doctor. But when your soul is sick, you don't care. You don't know if your soul is overweight or underweight. You do not know if your soul is sick or not sick. You are satisfied because you pray. Likewise, he or she is satisfied because they eat. But do they eat the right food? This is the question. Some of us brothers and sisters go to work. They pray in the morning. They are too busy through the whole day. They come home after Maghrib. So when they go home, they pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Hisha. After they finish, they are okay. They are free of guilt. They feel comfortable. I did all my salah. But I want you to know that this kind of a salah is not good salah. And I'll give you the equivalent of this. Let's say you all out the whole day. You did not eat your breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You're so tired. Your body is so miserable. You are in a bad mood. You are so weak. That is the physical part. The equivalent, your soul will be tired, will be weak, may become sick. Your faith is vulnerable. Like your body is vulnerable for disease and illnesses because you didn't have enough energy in it. Now, when you come home, your wife put the food in the front of you. Say, honey, I made this breakfast for you in the morning, but you didn't eat it. You have to eat it. I made this lunch at noon. You did not eat it, but you have to eat it. And I have a fresh dinner here. You have to eat it. But before the dinner, you have to eat the lunch. And before the lunch, you have to eat the breakfast. Let me explain to you how good is your salah. Now the brother come. He was so hungry. Yet that uh, cold, uh, greasy pancakes, he can eat because he's so hungry. By the time he finishes his breakfast, he's going to move to his lunch, which used to be hot and fresh and good at noon time. But he was not there at noon. He's going to eat the lunch. He's getting full. He's trying to squeeze as much as he can. <laughs> then after he finished, he has to push and put the fresh food that it become no fresh anymore. He's not enjoying it anymore. He's not tasting it anymore. And he have to force that dinner in him. Now, honey, I ate the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I feel good. He goes to sleep, he can go to sleep. He can breathe good. But his food, he's not hungry anymore. Huh? This is exactly like your salah. When you come at Aisha, and you start with Dhuhr, by Dhuhr you feel okay, you are awake. By Asr you are tired. Huh? When you finish Asr and move to Maghrib, you are bored. You are so bored, you don't even want to finish Asr. When it comes to Aisha, you are so sleepy. You do not know how you like how you pray. Even though after you finish, you can do okay, I finish my Salah. But I want you to know, this is the quality of your Salah. Like the quality of this prayer. Huh? I'm talking about this area because I'm sure the great majority of us have this problem. And I do once in a while, unfortunately. Some of us, they do not wait. 
huh? they do not wait when they go out they are hungry at noon they don't stay hungry they go eat whatever they go to McDonald's drive through they get a hamburger and fries they swallow it very quickly while they are driving they fill up the rest of the stomach with the soda and, and uh, the fries and they are okay. I'm not hungry anymore, I'm okay. Likewise, some of the brothers, they said, no, I'm not gonna accumulate all my salah. I will do this salah, work in a gas station, I'll do it behind the counter, around the beer and the liquors and the things that I sell. <laughs> huh? I'm driving a cab, I will park my cab and I just go do it very quickly. And you're not concentrated. You're so scared. You're not safe, you're not thinking. But after you finish, you feel what? <coughs> I did my salah. You did your salah like your brother did his food at McDonald's drive through This is the quality of that. <laughs> Sometimes we cannot really, in a practical way, go at lunch and eat in a nice restaurant or go home. Just be, let's be practical. We live in a country that's different than our countries. Some of us, they say, okay, I know I eat junk food through the day, but I eat good breakfast while I'm home, and I eat good dinner when I go back home. That may make you feel a little bit more comfortable. And I want you to do that with your salah as well, because while you are busy to eat, you are busy to pray as well. I'm talking about hard-working people here. I want you, when you do junk salah, like you do junk food, and I'm sorry to, to use that, I don't want to use that. But the quality is not good. I want you to do good breakfast for your soul before you go to work, which is the salah of Fajr. Try to make it in a masjid. And if the masjid is so far away, give yourself enough time. Wake someone from your family and pray in Jannah. And if you can, just pray by yourself, take your time, and give a good quality breakfast to your soul before you leave. And if it happens that Dhuhr and Asr gonna be very quickly drive through Salah, it's okay. Do it to the best you can. But prepare yourself to a nice hot meal when you go home. For your spirit, not for your stomach. The hot meal, nice hot meal for your spirit is in the masjid. <coughs> with the right jama'ah, with the right brothers and sisters. Just like when you go home, the best of the food when you eat it with the right company. When you eat it with your wife and mother and father and <coughs> brothers and sisters and your children around you, this is the best company for food. When they give you some appetizers before the food and some desserts after the food, Likewise, when you go to the masjid, there is a different group of jama'ah that you have in the masjid. Your brothers and sisters in Islam, your mother and father in Islam, your children in Islam, which is the whole community. You go there and they give you the appetizers before the salah, like the sunnah before the salah. Huh? They give you the dessert after the salah, which is the sunnah after the salah. Huh? They give you some coffee and tea if you are a drinker of coffee and tea, which is the tasbih and the dhikr after the dessert, which is after the sunnah of the salah. Brothers and sisters, I try to put you in a situation to evaluate your salah and to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he built that religion upon the five pillars, the main and the most important one is the Salah. You can live with the Salah and go to the Jannah with the Salah because of the Salah. But if you ignore the Salah and do the rest, you're going to fail. The Salah with the rest of the pillars of Islam after the Shahada, Alhamdulillah. Just like when you go to an exam. And the exam have four questions. One of which give you 70 point and the other three it's 10 point each 70 point for one question 10 point for each 70 point for the salah 10 points for zakat 10 point for hajj 10 point for siyam if you do the zakat and the siyam and hajj perfect 
and you achieve the highest score, 30 points, you still a failure, you are not gonna pass. But if you do the salah perfect, or the best perfect in the mind of Allah, or in the sight of Allah, is the best you can do. That's the perfect to Allah. Your maximum efforts. You see what I mean? If you do the salah, you may be exempt from that question of zakah. You may be exempt from the question of siyam. You may be exempt from the question of hajj. And you may pass, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I say in the beginning of my talk, does not, even if you are exempt from salah, from fasting or zakah or hajj, <coughs> does not let you go away without so he give you a touch of each one while you are doing the salah while you are doing the salah you are toward the kaaba which is for hajj you are saying the good words which are charity you are fasting you cannot eat you cannot drink while you are doing the salah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you indirectly what you are missing directly like a doctor can say do not eat saturated fat but you may get a little bit through one of the uh, 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 good food that you can take, that indirectly you get what you need from that. You do, not, you do not need to take sugar, but you may get that through one apple or a banana or something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you everything through the salah and compensate you for whatever you miss because the salah is the connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the only nation that go to Hajj, to the Kaaba. We have a different system for the Zakat. Maybe different than the Christians, maybe different than the Jewish people, maybe different than other religions before us. But the Salah was always there since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam. Because no servant can live without a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are a believer, you have to have connection. And that connection is the salah. So, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam said, رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَى Prophet Ibrahim asked to be among those who perfect their salah and ask Allah to accept his dua. Prophet Ismail what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّةِ وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make mention of Ismail. Indeed, he was a truthful prophet. And he used to enjoy salah and a charity on his, in, in his people. And he was accepted in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Isa alayhi salam, said, إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّ وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّةِ وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا So Salah was always there. Those nations lived without the same zakah that we have, lived without siyam like Ramadan, lived without hajj, but they did not live without Salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sarrahu an yukallim Allah fal yusalli. Wa man sarrahu an yukallimahu Allah fal yakhra'i al-Qur'an. The one who loves to talk to Allah, let him go and pray. Salah. Talking to Allah is the salah. The one who loves to listen to Allah talking to him, let him go and recite the Qur'an. Because Qur'an is addressing you. Allah is talking to you. Salah, you are talking to Allah. So beautiful. When Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam in the ayah that I mentioned said, Rabbi jalni muqeem as salah. If you go through the Holy Quran, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the salah, did not say, do the salah, or go make your salah, or perform your salah. He used the word iqamat as salah. Iqamah. Iqamah is not the call for the salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Shadu al This is not the Iqamah salah. Huh? This is a permission for the people to stand up so they can be ready for the salah. But because standing up in Arabic called Iqamah, someone was sitting and stand up. But the real Iqamah is 
according to the Arabic language, and I have the brothers, the Imams here, Iqama means to straight up something crooked, to stand up something sitting down or laying down. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Iqama to salah, yuqimuna salah wa yuqtuna zakah. He didn't say they pray and they give charity. He said, Iqama to salah, ita is zakah. And it will come, I will explain the word ita too. Iqama means to straight up the crookedness of your salah. Because Mu'ad ibn Jabal, when he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him to advise him or to tell him about something that if he does, he will go to the Jannah, he told him to qim salah and to eat his zakah. But he knows that Mu'ad is praying and giving the zakah. You could be praying, but you are not doing the iqamah. What do you mean praying but not doing the iqam? It's the quality food. You remember the quality food? You are eating but you are not eating the right food. You are praying but you are not praying the right prayers. Iqamah to salah is to perfect the imperfection of your salah. To complete the incompletion of your salah. To perform the salah to the best manner possible according to your ability. This is Iqamah to salah. Since we came to that part, let me explain. Yu'tun, ita. Always come the word ita, yu'ti. What is that? When we translate it unfortunately to English, we say pay the charity or give the charity. But when you go to the verses of the Quran and you see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the believers, it is zakah. I know the Arabic language may be a barrier here. It is different than tu'ti zakah. Tu'ti, different than tu'ti. Ita, it has a combination of meaning. Combination of ita means he came. Ita means he gave. And you can add to this that the believer came while he has to pay the zakah, he came by himself and gave the zakah and was very happy. That's ita. I'ta means you are given, but not necessarily happy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you when you pay your zakah, that's ita. When you pay your taxes here, it's i'ta. <laughs> you are given it, but maybe you might not be happy. But when it comes to ita is zakah, if you are not happy, Allah doesn't want it. And Allah doesn't want you to stay home until the poor man come and knock your door and say, please give me. When you give him, that's i'ta. Because you did not go. So you have to go, give, and be happy. If you miss one of those, so this is not ita, this is i'ta. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talk about the non-Muslims, when they live in the Islamic state, the Muslims are given the zakah, ita, and the non-Muslims are given the jizya, i'ta. حتى يعطوا الجزية يعطوا not يؤتوا because إتاء you do it with happiness and gratitude you're doing it because you know that you have to it is not yours the zakat is not yours it is something a foreign object in the food that you are eating if you eat it will harm you so when you take it out, you are happy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that regard said, مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَلَمٌ The sadaqah does not reduce your money or your wealth. Someone can argue that. What are you talking about? I have a hundred dollars and I pay two and a half. The balance is 97 and a half. My wealth is less. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said that, he knows that your wealth without giving the zakah, like a banana. When you eat it, and you throw away the thing that should not be there, it's still a full banana. If you eat it with the skin of it, will be big in size, bad in taste, more in harm, less in benefit. If you feel it, will be a little bit less in size, full in benefit, good in taste, less in harm. Like a chicken you get from the farm, it's a full chicken. Eat it like it is, this is your wealth without the zakah. You eat it with the feather and the blood and the stolen whatever in it. This is your wealth without taking the zakah out. That's why the word zakah in Arabic does not mean given. Does not mean being kind. Zakah means purification, cleansing. You are cleansing your wealth. Because if you eat it like it is, it will be dirty. And when you clean it, you have to be very careful. Very careful. Because if you leave a little bit, I will give you the example here. A chicken from the farm is a full chicken. Can you eat it like it is? You have to take the feather out. You have to drain the blood out. What if you drain all the blood except for one drop? You have to be careful here. Because whatever you take is impurity. When you pay the zakah, you are cleaning your wealth. Whatever you leave is impure, you're gonna eat. What about sadaqah? Sadaqah, this guy is paying sadaqah, he's so kind. No, he's not. Paying sadaqah means you're sadaq. Sadaq means you're honest. Honest. Honest of what? Honest of delivering what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hire you to deliver. Because sometimes Allah give you the risk because you pay the zakah. And if you don't pay the zakah, Allah will fire you. And your risk is not going to be given. So can I call my risk something else? Yes. My risk is the fee that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pay me for delivering that zakah. Open your mind with me, please. When Allah or Rasulullah told you to pay two and a half percent, so the 97 and a half are the fees that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is paying you. So you can deliver the two and a half. If you start delivering the two and a half, Allah may fire you and hire someone else and give him 97 and a half so he can deliver two and a half. Reverse it. Reverse it. Don't think that I'm so kind, I'm paying two and a half percent from the money I make. Can I ask you, how did you make your money? I'm so healthy and so strong. Who gave you the health? I'm so smart, I became a doctor. Who gave you the intelligence? Who gave you the ability to study? Who made you so smart? Who made you remember all the knowledge so you can pass the exam? Allah. And you can see, you are a PhD in medicine, and your brother is farm labor. He's from the same mother and father. When you both were in the elementary school, in some cases, maybe he was smarter than you. Why Allah chose you over him? Allah hired you and gave him a break for a while. And Allah can fire you and hire someone else. So this is the zakah. When can you call yourself generous? Because we always call the brothers who pay the charity or the zakah generous brothers. When you exceed the minimum, whatever above the minimum, that's generosity. And let me give you another example. The postman, the mailman, is hired by the post office to deliver your mail. Do you always see him when he delivered the mail say, thank you very much for delivering my mail. I really cannot appreciate that. He didn't say anything. Why? Because he's hired to do that. That's his job. He was paid for it. 
You were paid to pay the zakat. Don't even expect that poor and, and, and needy person to tell you thank you. You only be in sadaq and you deliver what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to deliver. But what if the mailman did not deliver all your mail? He delivered 10 letters and kept two in his car. He doesn't care. What do you call this mailman? Dishonest. What if his boss knows about that? He will be what? Fired. What if you pay 2% and not pay the 2.5%? <laughs> You're dishonest. That's why when you pay the minimum, we call that sadaqah means you are sadaq. When you pay your zakah, zakah means purification, you cleanse your wealth. When you exceed the minimum, you are kind. And the more you are kind, the more you enjoy your risk. If we say that chicken that we we're talking about, the minimum is to remove all the feather and all the skin. Some people eat the skin, it's okay. <laughs> and to remove all the internal parts. What if you exceed that and remove some of the fat? That's okay to eat, but you don't want to eat. You remove part of the leg. You remove the neck. You remove the liver. Something that you could eat, but voluntarily you give extra. The leftover of this will be the best parts of the chicken. You will enjoy it very much because you gave the minimum and you were very sure that nothing is less than the minimum. I'm going a little bit higher than the minimum to be safe. Like a doctor removing a cyst, a cancer uh, 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 cyst. I was told by doctors that they they do not only remove the cyst, they take something a little bit more around it to be sure that there is no evidence of that cancer cell can spread in the rest of the body. Do that when it comes to the zakat or to the sadaqah. Don't say two and a half percent exactly. Go a little bit further because you don't know. Like some of your items in taxes, some are taxable, some may be taxable, some may be not taxable. Just be in the safe side, brothers and sisters. He said, Ihdina, guide us, us, you and who? You and all these people. If Allah accepted, He's not going to say, you know what, I'm just going to give you, I don't care about these people. No, they were there. Allah is so generous. That's why we have to do the salah in jama'ah. We have to perfect it to the best manner possible. This is the meaning of Iqamat al-Salah. Let's say we have a brother who goes to the masjid five times a day. What do we call him? Religious. He's religious. He comes to the masjid five times a day. Rasulullah said, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجُلَ يَعْتَادُ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَاشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ If you see the man or the woman goes to the masjid in a regular basis, but let me say the woman, the woman has a special deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She can do her salah at her home and get the credit as if she does it in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the side of the woman a lot more than what you guys expect. But I'm not against so I'm very pleased that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this advantages to my mother, to my sister, to my daughter, and to my wife. So when you see the man or the woman goes to the masjid or pray five times a day, we say religious. But let's assume that one of us do not go to the masjid, does not pray. We do not know if he prays or not. We never see him pray. But he fasts from Allah perfect. And he made the zakah and more than the zakah. And goes to Hajj every year. Do you call him religious? No. No. Then we say even all of this does not give you enough score to pass the exam. He's not religious. But a man goes to the masjid, even if he is too old to fast and he's exempt, he doesn't fast. <laughs> too poor to pay the zakah, he does not pay the zakah. Huh? Too weak to go to the hajj, he does not go to hajj, but he still goes to the masjid every day, we call him religious. So the salah indicates that if that person who prays is rich, I'm sure he will pay the zakah. If this person who prays every 
day five times, if he's able to go to Hajj, I'm sure he will go. If this person is strong enough to fast Ramadan, I'm sure he will. But not the opposite. When you see someone fast Ramadan, you cannot conclude because he fasts Ramadan, I'm sure he is praying five times a day, 365 days a year. You're not sure about that. If he goes to Hajj 20 times, you are not sure that he's making the Salah. If he pays the Zakah or the Sadaqah or he's a very kind person, you are not sure that he makes the Salah. So the Salah indicates for the rest of the religion, the rest of the religion does not indicate for the Salah. So this is the Salah. So my objective that I like to achieve today is that each and every one of us at least do something a little bit better toward perfection of your Salah. And I'll stop at this, and your brothers can ask me as many questions as we can answer, inshallah, by the help of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar. 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 Allahu I believe that our lecturer has done justice to this topic and now put everything together in two words. Two things he has talked to us about is two things that Allah said in the Quran. The first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he has created us from soil and nothing can nourish that except that which comes from the soil. Your body is created from soil and the only thing that mixes grow and nourish is what? Soil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Allah says they will ask you about the soul, say to them that what? The soul comes from who? Allah. That is spiritual part of it. That he has talked to us about that nothing can nourish your soul except that which comes from who? Allah, the creator and nourisher of the soul. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards in abundantly. Thank you.